Hello everyone. In this video, we shall solve the questions on organic spectroscopy of cassette previous year cassette question papers. At least three to four questions will be on the organic spectroscopy. First question is the proton NMR spectrum of CS3O, CH, Cl, CH2Cl will exhibit. They are given the splitting patterns and the information about the peaks. So first uh, we will write this structure of this compound, detailed structure. This is CS3O, CH, Cl, CH2, Cl. Here there are three hydrogens are there, hence it is three hydrogen, it gives the three hydrogen. This carbon is having a different environment. This is going to give the another peak, hence it is also 1H. And here the, these two hydrogens are same attached to same carbon and these two hydrogens having same environment hence these two hydrogens are going to give the another peak and what is the splitting patterns of these different hydrogens uh, splitting pattern means this splitting patterns give the information about the hydrogens attached to the next carbon atoms that rule is n plus 1 rule that is n plus 1 rule it is also called as spin spin splitting rule n plus 1 rule means here this carbon is having 3 hydrogens and splitting patterns give you the information about the carbon if there is a carbon next to this carbon having hydrogens there is no carbon attached to this carbon hence it is not having any hydrogens hence the splitting patterns of the CS3 is here n equal to 0 because there is no hydrogens on the next carbon term hence it is it will be 1 apply n plus 1 rule to this carbon atom to this hydrogens n is 0 because there is no hydrogens on the adjacent carbon because there is no adjacent carbon hence it is 0 plus 1 equal to 1 1 is singlet 1 is singlet hence this is 3H singlet this CS3 going to give the peak of three hydrogens and the splitting pattern is singlet and next this hydrogen this is 1H hydrogen and check the number of hydrogen atoms adjacent attached to the adjacent carbon atoms there is no adjacent carbon atoms on this side but here one carbon is attached to this carbon atom this carbon is having two hydrogens hence apply n plus 1 rules n equal to 2 here 2 plus 1 is 3 hence it will be triplet triplet is t hence it is 1h t and these two hydrogens are same and hence it is 2h and the hydrogens up uh, attached to the adjacent carbon atom is 1 hence 1 plus 1 equal to 2 2 means it is a doublet so the peaks will be 3h singlet 1h triplet 2h doublet a 3 proton doublet it is not uh, this is not the option because uh, this is not the correct answer because the three to proton doublet is no uh, there is no three proton doublet it is singlet a three proton singlet uh, yes it is a three proton singlet one proton doublet one proton but it is not doublet it is triplet because there are two hydrogens and this is also not the correct answer a three proton singlet three proton singlet one proton triplet one proton triplet and a two proton doublet two proton doublet hence this this is the answer. The answer C is correct. 3 proton singlet, 1 proton triplet, 2 proton doublet. And the, let's check the fourth option also. A 3 proton triplet. This is uh, wrong. Hence option 3 is correct. Next question is, what is the expected relative intensity of M plus 1 peak in the mass spectrum of a compound containing 60 carbon atoms relative intensity relative intensity of m plus 1 peak m plus 1 peak will appear because of the presence of isotopes here they have given the information that the the, the compound is having 60 carbon atoms and the natural abundance of carbon c13 is 1.11 Hence, there are 60 carbon atoms are in the molecule and 1.11 into 60 will be 66.6. Hence, the relative intensity of the M plus 1 peak will be 66.6. .6. 
Hence option B is correct. Next question is the most convenient spectroscopic technique to establish the presence of intermolecular hydrogen bonding in hydroxyl compounds. So here uh, means how which spectroscopic technique is useful to determine the intermolecular hydrogen bonding in hydroxyl compounds. MOS bore and EPR give the indirect information about the these intermolecular hydrogen bonding but IR and NMR they can give the uh, especially the IR they it can give the in, uh, direct information about the intermolecular hydrogen bonding hence IR is the correct answer hence option B is correct IR gives the information about intermolecular hydrogen bonding and the next question is what will be the intensity of isotopic peaks in relation to molecular ion peak in CH2 Cl2 when there is a Cl, Chlorine and Bromine, the isotopic peak, intensity of the isotopic peak is very important. M plus 1, M plus 2, M plus 4 peaks means the isotopic peaks are depends upon the relative abundance of the atoms in the nature. So here Chlorine, the relate, we know that there are 35 Chlorine and 37 Chlorine are the two isotopes of Chlorine the relative abundance of these chlorine is 35 and 37 is 3 is to 1 hence when we have the one, only one chlorine in your molecule the, uh, the relative intensity of m plus peak and m plus 2 peak will be 3 is to 1 because the relative abundance of 35 chlorine and 37 chlorine is 3 is to 1 hence only when one, only one chlorine is there the uh, the relative intensity of this m plus and m plus to peak will be 3 is to 1 when two chlorine atoms are there here i'll write m plus m m plus 2 and m plus 4 peaks the relative abundant the relative intensity of these peaks is 9 is to 6 is to 1 when there are two chlorine atoms when there are three chlorine atoms there then it will be 27 is to 27 is to 9 is to 1 one will be m plus 6 peak here i will write 9 the after simplification 9 is to 9 is to 1 is to 1 by 9 this is the relative intensity of isotopy peaks when one chlorine is there it is 3 is to 1 this is the relative intensity of m plus and m plus 2 peak when two chlorine atoms are there it is 9 is to 6 is to 1 is the relative intensity of m molecular ion peak m plus 2 peak and m plus 4 peak when there are three chlorine atoms are there m plus peak is 9 is to 9 is to 1 is to 1 by 9 is for m plus 6 peak this is for m plus m plus 2 m plus 4 and m plus 6 peaks another important halogen is bromine bromine can exist in two forms 79 bromine and 81 bromine so when you have one bromine in the molecule m plus peak and you are going to get m plus and m plus 2 peak in that case the relative intensity will be 1 is to 1 because the natural abundance of this 79 bromine and 81 bromine is 100 is to 98 that is almost 1 is to 1 hence when you have one bromine in the molecule the relative intensity of m plus and m plus 2 peak will be 1 is to 1 when you have two bromine atoms you are going to get one extra peak isotopic that is m plus 4 peak and the relative intensity of m plus m plus 2 and m plus 4 peak will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 this will be relative intensity when you have three bromine atoms you are going to get another peak extra peak that is m plus 6 peak and the relative intensity of m plus m plus 2 m plus 4 and m plus m plus 6 peak will be 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so this is very important so when you have chlorine only one chlorine it will be 3 is to 1 when you have two chlorines it will be 9 is to 6 is to 1 when you have three chlorines 9 9 1 1 by 9 and when you have bromine 
when you have one bromine it will be one one is to one when you have two bromine it will be one to one one is to two is to one and when you have three bromines it will be one is to three is to three is to one so in this question there are two chlorine atoms are there hence it is nine is to six to one hence option c is correct next question is match the techniques given in list one with the regions given in list two are in order here they have given the spectroscopic techniques and they have given the regions of electromagnetic radiations means we should find out the which region is useful for which spectroscopic technique for this i will give one i will show on a table which will be very useful this is a chart these are the regions of electromagnetic radiations gamma rays x rays uv visible ir microwaves and radio waves these are the regions here i have shown the uh, uv is having far uv and near uv and visible is separate and visible and near ir mid ir and far ir and microwaves and radio waves these are the wavelengths of these regions and these are the frequencies these are the phenomena clear transitions takes place in gamma rays region electronic transitions takes place in x rays region electronic transitions takes place in uv and visible molecular rotations and vibrations mainly the vibrations take, takes place in this ir especially the vibrations the mid ir that is wavelength uh, of 2.5 to 25 here uh, the vibration this is called as vibrational region the ir whatever you take the ir that is uh, did this uh, mid ir is responsible for that vibrational spectroscopy and uh, mo molecular rotations rotational spectra we can get the rotational spectra by the use in the microwaves region and nuclear spin transitions takes place in the radio waves and in the next column uh, here are the spectra for the respective regions gamma rays are responsible for mass burst spectroscopy x rays are for electronic and here uv and visible are responsible responsible for electronic spectroscopy absorption fluorescence and phosphorescence uh, mainly the electronic uh, spectroscopy is uv is responsible for the electronic spectroscopy and vibrational uh, uh, ir is responsible for vibrational and rotational microwaves are responsible for rotational nmr and, and nqr in the radio waves this table is very important uh, you can we may get one or two questions on this table here uh, the gamma rays are having higher frequency higher energy and higher wave number and the wavelength increases from gamma rays to radio waves means gamma rays having less wavelength wavelength is increases along this gamma ray from gamma rays to radio waves but the this is this is inversely proportional to energy frequency and wave number because energy frequency and wave number is higher high at gamma rays and it is less at radio waves okay here vibrational spectroscopy as you know vibrational spectroscopy ir region is responsible for vibrational spectroscopy for electronic spectroscopy we uv visible radiations are useful for electronic spectroscopy rotational microwave is for rotational spectroscopy and for mass bore spectroscopy gamma rays are useful hence gamma rays as are responsible for mass bore spectroscopy like this the one is c two is electronic spectroscopy is uv that is two is d rotational is for three is a microwave mass bore is for b that is gamma rays 1c 2d so here they have not given this correct option but this is correct option vibrational spectroscopy ir region is responsible for vibrational spectroscopy uv and visible are electronic spectroscopy gives you the electronic spectroscopy microwave region rotation gives the rotational spectroscopy and gamma rays gives the mass bore spectroscopy hence this this pattern is correct that is 1c you are not given 1c 2d so it may be the correct but c and a are uh, c should be under 1 and a should be under 3 okay hence this is correct 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द नंबर ऑफ सिग्नल्स ऑब्जर्व इन प्रोटॉन एंड नंबर स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ थ्री फाइव डायब्रोमो टॉलिन हेयर आई राइट द्री फाइव डायब्रोमो टॉलविन दिस इज स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ टॉलविन वन टू थ्री ब्रोमो एंड इज इट इज फाइव ब्रोमो थ्री फाइव डायब्रोमो टॉलविन इज द स्ट्रक्चर यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द नंबर ऑफ सिग्नल्स नंबर ऑफ सिग्नल्स इज डिपेंड्स अपॉन द Uh, the uh, the uh, environment of the hydrogens. If uh, the hydrogens having same environment, they are going to give the same si signal. Means they are going to give the same signal. Here, C S three is having separate environment. These two hydrogens, these two hydrogens, this hydrogen and this hydrogen having same environment because this is attached to this carbon atom. Next carbon atom there is a C S three and next carbon atom there is a B R. Here also same thing. This is attached to this carbon atom. Next carbon atom having C S three and this next carbon atom having B R. So these two are having same environment and these two going to give the same signal means single signal. And here there is a one hydrogen. The the environment of this hydrogen is different from these hydrogens. Hence it is also going to give the another signals. Hence there are three signals are possible. You are going to get three peaks or three signals for this. Three five diabromo toluene. Hence, option A is correct. Like this means the different. The, you should look for the uh, uh, environment of those hydrogens. If the same, if the hydrogens having same environment, they are going to give the same peaks. If the environment is different, they are going to give the different peaks. We shall move to the next question paper.